guys. Ooh, hello. Here we are. Um, I like to think of this book as, as very much about how adults lie to children. Um, because it's something I completely don't believe in, but um, also have done as a parent, more or less by mistake, I think. Um, if you haven't read the book, uh, Gil is the father and, and Mila is, is his daughter, and they've, they've come to New York State to look for Gil's friend who's disappeared. In the morning, Gil says, we're going on a road trip. He says it almost gaily. We are both keen to move on. There doesn't seem to be enough air in this house. Though I don't know how that could be. I'll miss Gabriel. He claps his hands now when he sees me or I call his name, and he snuggles into my shoulder when I pick him up. I like the feel of him, compact and much heavier than he looks, like a bundle. I've never known a baby as a person, and now I can see why people like them. When he looks at me and smiles, I feel chosen. Do you think he knows his name? I ask his mother. Of course, she smiles. He'll miss you when you're gone. Do you think he misses his dad? I look at her. Suzanne's mouth pulls up tighter than ever. Does his dad miss him? That would be my question. I must look a little shocked because she reaches out and touches my elbow. Don't worry, Mila. Everything will work out in the end. She pushes her hair back off her face with a tired gesture. And I think, what end? The end of time? After a minute, I say, do you want Matthew to come back? Suzanne frowns. Yes, of course I want him to come back. She glances at Gabriel, then back at me. How could I not? As answers go, this is not the same as saying, oh my, yes, if only God would send him home tomorrow, I would die happy. It's closer to, do I want him back? Not especially. But if he happened to come home, I'd certainly be happy for Gabriel. Gabriel's too little to understand any of this. He'll get the picture someday, but I hope it's not soon. I've only known him for one day, but already I feel protective of him. If you could see his big, fat, smiley face and his little pursed-up, birdie mouth, you'd feel the same. I find it hard to believe that a person could walk away from that face. Suzanne's phone rings, and I carry Gabriel into the living room and put him on the sofa. I prop him up on all sides with pillows, then throw a squashy yellow ball at him, and he flaps at it. Flap, flap, flap. He's no good at catching but I don't want to make him feel bad, so I throw the ball again. Flap, 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 flap. He makes a high squeaking noise like a bat. Gil stands behind me watching. He's very endearing, Gil says. He is, I say. He makes you love him. I throw the ball again and he flips and flaps, but I can see that his face is starting to screw up with frustration. So I jiggle him on my lap and sing him a song and he calms down. I wouldn't leave him, I say. Gil shrugs a little and frowns and doesn't say there's nout so queer as folk, which is another of his favorite expressions, and probably one he doesn't particularly want to apply to his older friend, his oldest friend, it being not very flattering. He doesn't look happy. What are the possibilities? I speak quietly because I can hear Suzanne on the phone in the next room. She laughs a little to show that everything's okay, but it doesn't have that effect. I suppose he might have got mixed up in something he shouldn't have, Gil says. Like? Like bad company. What sort of bad company? For an instant, I imagine something like the gas company, only full of villains. <coughs> Gil shrugs again. Drugs, gambling, smuggling, prostitution, contraband, arms trading, money laundering. My expression makes him laugh. Well, he, well you asked, he said. And no, I don't think Matt is running a prostitution ring. It's not his style. Or at least it never was before. People change. Or some, something happens so you don't recognize them anymore. It happens. A wave of anxiety chokes me and I think of Catelyn. I know it happens. The possibility that someone I know can all of a sudden change makes me feel sick. I pull Gabriel close and kiss him so Jill, Gil won't see how I feel. The more usually it's the other way around, Gil says. More usually, you don't see someone for 30 years, and when you meet up again, it's exactly the way it was back then. He thinks for a minute and then says, Matthew's had a bad time. It probably, it probably goes back to Owen's death, but what do I know? Maybe it's not, a, not that at all. Maybe he's gay and living a lie. I've known him a very long time, he says, but you never really know what's going on in someone else's head. 
There's nowt so queer as folk, he says. This makes me smile. And Gil looks up and blinks as if he's forgotten I'm here. And that's the end of today's lecture, he says, as Suzanne comes back in, staring at her phone accusingly. What lecture, she says, but it sounds more automatic than curious. I'm still snuggled up with Gabriel, but when he sees his mum, he begins flapping his hands and making his high-pitched bat noise. Suzanne's phone rings again. She looks at the number, answer it, answers it, and her voice changes once more. Let me phone you back, she says, and turns her attention to Gabriel, sweeping him off her lap, off my lap. Pooh, she says, giving an exaggerated sniff. Smelly boy. And she's off to change his diaper. I have the nose of a bloodhound, and to me, he didn't smell of anything but baby. Let's hit the road, Dad says. It's getting late.